What's going on, buddy? My name is Season, and welcome back to another video. Today, I say, turning the topics 2.1 and 2.2 for AP compared to government and politics. So, let's get started. So, we're going to first look at parliamentary systems, then presidential systems, and semi presidential systems. We're going to describe them and compare them. So, let's get started. So, parliamentary systems, such as the United Kingdom, combine the lawmaking and executive functions, which allows the national legislator to select and remove the head of government and cabinet. So, in the United Kingdom, elections are held to determine placement. In Parliament, there are no elections for the Prime Minister, which consists of the Executive Branch. Members of Parliament select the Prime Minister, who is considered Head of Government and Cabinet. This Prime Minister can also be removed by Parliament. We'll learn more about this in a future video. Because of this process, the Prime Minister's political party is most likely going to reflect the views of Parliament. This creates a check and balance system on the government because every five years is a legislative election. So if the views of the majority of the people change, that will also occur in the legislative and the executive branch. Parliamentary systems also have fewer institutional obstacles to enact policy than presidential and semi-presidential systems because the legislator serves the prime minister. And if they're mostly the same political party and have similar views, policy making should be a breeze. Because of this, there's typically less gridlock on the government. The prime minister also decides on members for the cabinet, which is the center of policy making in a country. Parliaments may conserve cabinet members, refuse to pass executive proposed legislation, question the executive and cabinet members, and impose time deadlines on calling new elections. A new election occurs every five years. Presidential systems, such as Mexico and Nigeria, feature a cabinet that is mostly responsible to the elected executive, with a legislative branch that can only remove cabinet members through the process of impeachment. The president is a part of the cabinet. The legislative branch has its own separate election from the president, which makes up the executive branch. This president serves as both the head of state and head of government, which is different from the UK system, as the Prime Minister serves as only the head of government. The legislative branch has a purpose for creating the new laws for the country. Alright, similarly, in semi-presidential systems such as Russia, there is separate elections for the president and national legislator, but the president nominates a Prime Minister, who is approved by the legislator, of course. Now, this has a coexistence of a president and a Prime Minister, making it a mix between parliamentary and a presidential system. The president is the head of state, and the Prime Minister is the head of government. The Prime Minister doesn't have as much power as the president either. Members of the cabinet are held accountable by both the president and legislator, and of course deal with aspects of policy making. But in Russia, they also ensure rule of law, deal with education, energy use, industry and trade, and a whole lot more. We find more separation of powers in our presidential and semi-presidential systems. And that is the end of the video. Please like, subscribe, and comment. It's great, really, to help me out if you enjoy this and found it useful. In the link in the description down below, I have more AP compared to government help with MCQs and FRQs. Very, very cool. We're going to get started with the executive branch in the next video. So go check that out. See you guys in the next video. Adios.